Hi and welcome to this video about HTTP and uh, data objects with Flowable. I'm Valentin Zigner and I'm going to show you how you can use the Flowable data objects with HTTP. You might have already checked out the videos from Joram where he's using data objects uh, together with a database ba a based backend, uh, which is definitely a good additional resource since it uh, shows way more capabilities of data objects than this video. But this video is an introduction how you can use data objects together with a REST-based uh, data object. Now I'm going to start basically uh, with creating some models in Flowable. Therefore I have Flowable Design, Flowable Work and Flowable Control uh, up and running over here. In addition to that, since we are talking about something which is REST-based, I also prepared a REST endpoint which gives us items that is running on my localhost with the port 3000. So localhost 3000 slash items will return me one REST endpoint. Here we have the um, data inside which provides a list of different data elements. I can now also go ahead if you will say I would like to post something new that is type JSON. There I could say I would like to add an, a new mouse for example and say the description is this is an animal. Uh, it's actually similar in, in case you haven't checked it out the video then uh, which is about uh, the service registry together with HTTP requests. I use the exact same uh, server there basically in the back on background. So that allows you to then basically add items in here and so on. Um, we have now uh, the laptop and the mouse which is coming back and I can also go ahead and just query one specific item of saying items slash one where we receive one or two. Here we don't have them nested in data, so we have the direct response over here. Now going back to my flowable, I am going to create a new um, uh, items uh, app, which is going to handle everything around my items. And in there, I am going to start with data object model, which specifies how my data structure looks like. You could also go ahead and uh, start with the process model itself. Often when you use data objects, however, go ahead and think first about how your data and your data structure is and then embed it into your model. At the end, it's completely up to you. I for now just create a new object and then I picked other to select in here the first one. It's data objects and I'm going to name that item since the data object itself is going to represent one item. Now for that item, I can go ahead and create the different fields which I have. So I'm going to start with ID, which is of the type long since that is a number. It is also my lookup ID. And then next, I'm going to add name, uh, which is uh, the name of the item itself. And last but not least, I have the description. You see actually over here, there are way more types than just those uh, two, which you can use. You can even um, use a data object inside the data object or JSON to have some more complex uh, data structure. Now, um, those are the three uh, attributes I am going to add for now. And uh, based on this um, data object, we can now create a data source. A data source is uh, nothing but a service. So that is actually now really similar what we are doing than uh, in the video about how to use it with services. Uh, however, in this case, a lot of the stuff is going to be uh, created for us since it's also linked uh, to our data objects. So let's call that our item service. And we are going to specify the base URL. Um, since I used uh, Docker to run my Flowable, but my um, REST endpoint is not running with Docker, I need to specify here a different host name than localhost. Depending on your setup, um, it might be uh, still localhost. Just be aware that here you need to specify the host as it is reachable from your um, Flowable work instance. Now I directly specify the context path slash items 
since with that most of the endpoints which are generated are correct by default since there are some kind of default mappings uh, which are the basically rest-based pattern uh, added over here. So we have the lookup endpoint in here which is going to slash uh, dollar curly brace id closing curly brace it's method get and then we have the input parameter id which is added over here as well and output parameters it will use the shared output mapping which is somewhere here at the top where we have id name and description and uh, similar things we actually have also for the create endpoint create is a post it is just taking all the different variables as input parameters and then using the shared output. Again, we have an update that is doing a put against slash id basically and in there we have the input parameters as well. So there are default mappings available uh, in case you are not uh, basically either rest-based or not in exactly that same naming pattern. You obviously can adapt those and modify them as you need them. Now there's one endpoint which is not in here that is basically to get a list of all items therefore we can use the uh, or create a type search endpoint the url i am going to leave empty since i just would like to go to our base url i specify it's going to be the method get and the output path which is actually a json pointer is going to be slash data since for this endpoint, we have everything and all the data uh, below the sub endpoint uh, slash data. So when we go um, actually back uh, to our uh, postman where we see the response, and I just you all open slash items, we see that we have data in here. So that is the reason why I also use data here as the output path. And then the output parameters are going to be exa uh, exactly the same than for the other endpoints, so that is our shared output mapping. When you manually add an output mapping over here, actually, it will predefine you your data object fields, which you then can map uh, to your specific fields. Now, that is already the data object as I need to have it. And as the next thing, I can start integrating my data object either in, uh, for example, a page or into a process. For now I'm going to start with a page since that allows us to use a lot of the functionality which we have configured inside our data object uh, easily without doing too much work. So let's create another uh, page and that is my items dashboard. On that items dashboard I am going to use a data object data table which integrates directly with data objects. So here I don't need to configure any REST endpoints. I can just say I have a reference by item and I'm configuring the search operation in here. That search operation is just returning all items. So no additional things needed here. And then it also knows which columns we have available. For example, ID, name and description, uh, which I can simply add over here. I am going to save that and then publish it. And uh, then once published, I can simply refresh the page in here. And what I have is now an items app with my item dashboard. And we see in here, we have the two different items which I uh, created before. Now, uh, in addition to uh, just displaying that, we can simply go ahead and uh, configure an item create. Uh, which suggests me a form with name and description. Uh, here I could say that is supposed to be a multi-line text. And the same we can also do for editing. Either I uh, use the same form or I create a new one. I will just uh, use the same for now, since we also would like to edit uh, name and uh, description. And we see now when we refresh the page, we have now here a new plus button where we can say we would like to create here a keyboard. This is a music instrument, uh, which I'm going to add now. And uh, I can also edit it. So I can say this is a cool music instrument or whatever. 
Now the data, as I can see it here, is actually not stored inside Flowable. That is now only a reference to the REST endpoint. So when I refresh in here, my localhost 3000, I see directly that this new item is also in here, also already with the updated text. So whenever Flowable needs the data, it is going to look it up from here and Flowable itself is just storing a reference for you. Now let's go ahead and uh, create also a small uh, process. So that is my uh, item uh, creation process. So let's say I have a process around there where I'm going to create a new item. Uh, and in this process, I can now use uh, my data object tasks, which I have uh, available. So let's say I have in here a data object create. And that data object create, uh, I can configure with my item. Here I need to configure the operation with ID, name, and description. So all of those attributes uh, need to be specified in here. I am going to create a new start form, uh, create new item. And in this start form, I am going to then say I have now the name. So that's my item name. And I am going to add an item text or description to be more specific, which is a multi-line text. And I say in here um, that I am using those to provide them to my REST endpoint. So I have here the item name and here the item description, which I would like to use uh, basically to send them to the server. And as a result, I would like to save my item, which I then uh, will display here in an additional uh, user task, view item, where I am going to create another view item form. And that view item form is going to get on um, again name field and a um, uh, description field only that those are not stored on the uh, top level they are stored in the attribute item since for my uh, result variable i called it item which is the response we see that basically uh, in here item uh, what we have now the interesting part is that by default this is giving us a reference uh, to um, this data object. So it's not storing the data itself inside Flowable. It's storing a reference. And when the REST endpoint updates, it will also update that data. You can also store a copy. That copy is then uh, basically taken over and it will not call every single time the REST endpoint anymore. It will then store the data in Flowable as it is. Rather than doing a create, you could also go ahead and do a lookup, for example, by ID in here. So all of that is possible uh, simply by using the appropriate task. We could also use a find all to search all items. Now I need to come up with a name for a new thing, which I would like to uh, do. So microphone is used to record this movie. And I am pressing submit. And I see now I have here the few item task with microphone and is used to record this video. That's not that interesting to be honest, but we see basically here that item is from type global data object, which means then that in the background, it's not stored inside flowable, it starts, uh, it's stored externally. So let's look at our rest endpoint. And when I uh, go here, I see I have this microphone. Uh, which is ID4. So let's go ahead and go to ID4. And we can now go ahead and say, we also would like to update that. So I'm executing a put request and uh, let's change that a little bit. Microphone, and this is record, uh, used to record movies other than is used to record this movie. And uh, when I do a put, we see the uh, text is updated over here. When I now refresh my page in Flowable, we see that this text is also updated over here. So we have really a reference to what we have stored in our REST endpoint. And we are calling that REST endpoint also more often than just once we start the process. 
we are calling it whenever we need that information. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to check out also the additional video how you can use REST endpoints just with uh, service registry tasks rather than with data objects. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.